and welcome back. I'm John Lincove. I'm Michael Crossan. And I'm Ryan Pudlikowski. And today we are going to be talking about the Genesis Electrified GV70. No, not the GV70 EV, all right? Not the GV70 Electrified. It's the Electrified GV70, so make sure you remember that. <laughs> um, so it's a mid-sized SUV, two, uh, two-row SUV. We, we bought one to test here. Uh, we, we did borrow one a while ago and wrote our first drive on consumerreports.org about it, but we bought one to test because we're collecting um, all the EVs <laughs> that, are, that are for sale. Um, one of the little facts we have, 18 or 20, Michael, how many? I think we're up to 24 or 26. Okay, 26 charging sp- uh, slots. So not charger, you know, but individual slots to charge a vehicle. And we can't find a charger half the time, right? I mean, it's, it, like it's still a little up. complex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of EVs here, um, juggling positions, getting them up to miles and such. So, so anyway, so what we bought the 2023 electrified GV 70 all wheel drive advanced, um, we paid six, 67,595 for ours, including 1,125 for destination, $575 for black paint, special black paint and a $45 first aid kit. So, that that, wow. that brought it out. Yes, that, it's got. <laughs> is all, that normally listed like as a thing that you have to? Pay it is for one of the few options. If yeah, there's go, not a lot of options available on this, but it is one of the few. Huh. A lot of cars do come with them. Some I have seen are optional though. No yeah, kidding. Yep. So forty five bucks would better be nice. It, 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 those are nice band aids. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like band-aids. Elsa yeah. and Anna and <laughs> all that <laughs> stuff. I mean, no. Anyway, the <laughs> EG Fees seventy, as I'm going to call it, has a dual motor setup. Gives it all wheel drive, like it, like its name. Um, the motor, each motor produces 160 kilowatts with a max power listed as 320 kilowatts or 429 horsepower, uh, 516 pound feet of torque, and it also has a boost and an eco mode. So boost mode gives it 360 kilowatts of power for about 10 seconds, like. They say, like, if you have to make a super pass or something like that, (laughs) okay. Um, In eco mode, it it only produces 160 kilowatts of power, so not using as much much of the battery. Uh, That battery is has a capacity of 77.4 kilowatt hours. Does a couple cool things, so it can power your home appliances directly from it. It can even charge um, another EV. So So I didn't know this. How does that work? Yeah, so it has an EV to EV charge. I think that once we're done testing, we might. Yeah, there's a few cars we have that can do that to one degree or another. But basically, um, some of them, I think you do have to maybe buy an adapter or like a special cable sure. to do this. But you're basically taking electricity from one battery and yeah, feeding just, it into just, the other car. Hmm. I wonder, you come out of the torch charge port, I wonder? Must. Yeah, 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 you got to wow, plug right. in and okay. I think there's just like an interface. Makes sense. Um, I mean, it's just a big battery down there anyway. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. right. So a AAA can't bring you that, you know, jerry can <laughs> of electricity, but, you know, you can roll up and charge exactly, someone. Exactly. Like, 60 to 70 dollars a kilowatt hour for right Jeez. <laughs> to help them get going um range we're gonna get to that mm. we're, gonna, we're gonna get to we that will. so mike we have here tesla genesis vehicles been impressed what are your initial thoughts on it it's um it's very nice it's very genesis it's very much like our traditional gasoline power gv70 um, we've had one of those for quite a while that's also just very nice to drive. They're very similar. Um, they actually have the same color interior. So you could probably put yourself in either one and maybe not know which one you're in. It's sort of a, maybe not your typical EV, um, sort of like an undercover EV because there's a gas version of it. So you sort of don't look like it's an EV. There is the GV60, which right. definitely looks like an EV. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think this one flies under the radar just a little bit and it can maybe blend in with other vehicles. Like the G80 sedan. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it just kind of depends on if you like that styling or if you want more of that EV-ness styling of that GV60, yep. you know, because they're pretty similar in size um, and things like that. But overall, it's very nice to drive. No real complaints. I'm um, very comfortable. Yeah. And I had some passengers in it and they liked it as well. You fit it well? Yeah, everything was good. Okay. Ryan, what's yeah, what's I, your take on it at first, I, first blush? I, I really liked it. I, it. It also doesn't like completely wow me. It's nothing like um, over the top. But sometimes it's a nice thing nowadays, you know, just fairly easy to drive. Um, but, you know, to Mike's point, the dialing is, you know, you sort of have two, two different types of EVs now, right? You have like the EV looking like kind of culty, like, you know, the people that are really in, like enthusiast, like EV, it looks like an EV, right? Like and futuristic. Then there, yeah, yeah, the futuristic, like, you know, aerodynamic and all that. And then you have like the EVs that look like regular cars. And I think there's a market for that because there are people that want an EV. They just don't want maybe look. They stand out, right? So, like, right. like our BMW i4 looks like a Correct. four series and a 
really nice looking in it, but it's a nice EV too. So um, this is sort of the GV70 fits into that. It looks just like our gas version. Honestly, you wouldn't almost notice, I mean, from the inside, if you were sitting in one or the other, um, a few little things, but um, but uh, uh, driving it is, it's nice. Um, it's, it's got nice smooth power. It doesn't, it doesn't break your neck, but it um, doesn't need to. I mean, it's got plenty of power and right. um, well, if it did break your neck, well, the range would probably suffer more than, well, we're going to talk about. Yeah, sorry. About that later. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I fit in it pretty well. I'm a little bit taller. So it, um, the front seat I thought was quite roomy. Um, interior is nice. Um, it's, some areas I thought were a little bland for that kind of money, but um, yeah, it's put together well. I will say the materials are nice and it's put together well. Um, it's very Genesis, as you said, Mike. So yeah. I agree with that. It, it kind of, it feels, you know, Genesis has is, plays that, what Lexus used to be, you know, undercutting yeah, the, yeah. the Germans, yep. you know, like, okay, well, it's, you know, it's well put together. It's not flashy, you know, yep. but it give you but, a lot of like toys and things, you know, all the, all the, yeah, exactly. And that, you know, Genesis is playing that when, right. you know, Lexus is now, pre, you know, is premium priced. The Germans keep out pricing them, yeah, but still yeah. they're not cheap. You know, right. there's not that, that savings anymore. Um, you know, you, and you talked about the styling and the size, uh, according to Genesis, their their target Tesla Model Y, of course, Audi Q4 e-tron. Mm -hmm. There's a normal, conventional, I should say, looking uh, EV. Mercedes-Benz EQB. Um, that's like the one we haven't bought yet. Correct. <laughs> I'm sure it's on its way. <laughs> Some of the Mercedes yeah. uh, EVs. Um, the the GV70 is almost spot on with the Model Y in dimensions. Um, but funny enough, the, the GV70, the regular GV70, and the GV60 actually have roomier rear seats than yeah. the, the electric one. You know, and you have battery positioning and the floor sure. adjustment, but still, um, you know, the, that's the target, that's the area. We, we've liked a lot of the other Genesis products and we've liked that GV60, it, mm. but it's yeah. a different platform with this one. How, how does this drive? Is it similar, different? I, I, I thought it drove quite similar to the GV60, which is a good thing, because mm -hmm. I like driving that too. Um, this is a little taller. Um, and I think there might be a, and there's no, there's never much roll in an EV, but right because um, of the you know the battery and the center of gravity is so low. But um, this had a little more roll than I would say the the, the sixty did. But um, it drives much like the sixty, and again that's a good thing. The I mean I think Genesis um, does really nice does a nice job with the paddles for regen. Um, that's a huge thing because I'm not a one pedal driver, but I do like to grab a little bit of that. If I'm coming down a big hill, I'll ramp up the... Can you go into a little detail about like, you know, for people who haven't tried it out? Because yeah, yeah. again, some EVs don't offer it at all. Sure, right. Yeah, so you have EVs that have regen re regenerative braking that you can't even turn off. It's just on. And you lift off the gas and the thing slows down aggressively. And it can, it can be annoying if you're not used mm -hmm. to that. Um, but lately we're seeing some of these EVs that have these adjustments. So you can go from like level one to level three and then like a full, basically a full one pedal drive. And um, that's some, and that's you know you're recapturing energy is basically the idea behind regenerative braking, but um, it doesn't coast when you're in that mode. And I like the car to coast; it gives a more natural, normal internal and uh, internal combustion engine feel, if right. you will, just coast down the road. Um, like the BMW iX does that, yeah, really sure. well. Um, you know, a lot of the cars we have, you can turn it off, pretty much turn it all the way off, and it it, co it, co it then coast, which I like personally. But that's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the also I like the option to this, and right in the wheel, they're easy to use, and you can you know while you're driving, you just click it, and it'll ramp it up or ramp, you know ramp it down to basically a free rolling car. It's like finally useful paddle shifters almost. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. it's a good. I, I thought that was kind of at first. I was like, this is awkward because paddles are for shifting gears, right? But right, right. it makes perfect sense because it's right there and it's easy to easy to use. Um, so I, I think I think that's a nice thing to have in these EVs personally. And Genesis has done a nice job with that. Yeah. It like, is funny that you call them like paddle shifters. I mean, they're in the same location, essentially the same thing. What I like about the Hyundai Genesis product is the plus paddle is more regeneration. The minus is less. Mm -hmm. Where some of these other EVs, they're still treating it like upshift, downshift. Right. So it's sort of backwards. My mind makes the flip to, I'm in EV mode now. I want more regen, less regen. Right. Mm -hmm. But like a Mercedes, for example, is still like the transmission. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. my mind, then I'm kind of doing the wrong thing in that car. Sure. So I think this is... Um, you know, I don't know if that's because of maybe target buyer, but um, yeah. you know, I just get in that EV mode and I want more, I want less, and very easy to use. Yeah, yeah. I found yeah. myself using it a lot, and I normally don't like like you, you know, the pit paddles. We never use the paddles, and when they were, you know, all those automatics for a while, they had these paddles. Unless it was a severe sports car, we weren't really using right. them, right? Mm -hmm. I actually use these paddles all the time, and it's not—it's for nothing the same. I mean, it's for regenerative braking, so it's kind of a um, interesting thought, but it it works. I I, I like to drive with the regen, uh, you know, on the one pedal, like you're talking about. So again, you know, for people who don't know one pedal driving, uh, you don't have to use the brake to slow, you know, sure. so as you, you modulate with the throttle mm -hmm. and, you know, you lift off more, you get more, more braking, you, right. you lift up a little bit. Um, 
it, it almost in the sense of the same as using the 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 steering where you're like keeping your hands like right on the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. I want to sample it and try it. And I've learned to really like the the one pedal. Of course, you yep. then get into some. And I mean, I know that there's people out there who think that it does it well. The, the Rivian ones, for example, like it's just a little too aggressive and you can't modulate. And having sure. these these levels really works very well because what works on the highway doesn't work in stop and go and mm-hmm. vice versa. You know, So something that's really aggressive for that type of situation doesn't work around the highway where you, the minute you lift off, it really drops. Yeah. It. So I, I do like that. I, I like it a lot. What driving experience, you know, what, what's been the driving experience for you, Mike, with, and particularly in regards to the gas powered one, you know, conventional sure. engine versus this? The, it's, um, I mean, there's plenty of power. It's, could it have more? Sure. If you could flip a switch and give me another 100 horsepower, I absolutely would take it, but it doesn't need any more. It does have that boost mode if you do need that last little bit, um, but plenty of power. You do feel the weight a little bit in the vehicle. I think particularly under acceleration, it kind of squats in the rear and the nose sort of lifts up a little bit, mm-hmm. but I think that does add to a little bit of like the drama, the drama to it, yeah. and it makes sort of like, you know, out here on the track on the straightaway, if you just hammer it, it sort of squats and goes, and it yeah. kind of makes it fun a little bit, um, but it drives very much, I thought, like the regular GV70, just, you know, around town on back back roads and things like that. Um, you know, again, I think if you pick somebody up, you know, a friend and you didn't tell them that it was an EV, they might not know other than it's just really, really quiet inside. Yeah. It um, is very quiet. Just yeah. very yeah. smooth power delivery. But like I think you said earlier, it, this isn't so fast that it like smashes you over the head and that it's uncomfortable. Right. And same thing then with the regen, you can kind of tone that back a little bit. And, um, you know, you don't make your passengers car sick, which right. which is a positive thing, I think. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is that 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 kind of lurchingness. And I have had, had people say that. It's mm. interesting you both touched on the quietness. I found that the same way, you know, yeah. highway in around town, you know, usually with an EV, okay, on the highway, you know, you're hearing that wind rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it almost makes it, you know, you wonder why they have the, uh, you know, what, what do you say, the prestige trim. One of the things they have is active noise cancellation. Like, I don't know what, what they do would you be canceling out. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's very... Uh, premium feeling with, yes. just from a noise standpoint you know you shut the doors and you're in there it's quiet like, yeah. um, which gives it a quality feel you know you get in like a high end um, big like sedan like a big S class or something and you have that quietness this kind of gives you that feeling right yep. um, but to your point you normally yeah you don't hear the engine because it's an EV but you normally you get wind noise or road noise you don't get really any of that no you don't it's, I it's thought a, it was very quiet yeah. it's a very quiet car and I, I like the charge port up front I I I remember when we first had when they first when Genesis first dropped off the G80 for us to try the electrified G80. Excuse me. Yes. Um, it was, was kind of like a Where's Waldo at the charge door. But you think about it now, you 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 can pull in, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter where the Which plug side. is. You I know, know. I like yeah, that. But, you know, particularly now, you know, have Tesla opening up their their network. You mm-hmm. know, with some of those magic dock, quote unquote. That's not the right word for it. That's not the true word, but. You know, you, you can pull in, you know, Tesla, you back in, now yeah. you can pull right in and use those. So that, just for an example. That drives me nuts when you pull in and then like the cord's on the other side and then, and the cord's heavy and then it's on it a little tether and it's like wrenching on the, the outlet on the car. And yes. I, mean, I, yeah, they're built probably to deal with that, but that drives me nuts because it's not proper. You know what I mean? But, oh yeah. But rarely, sometimes you can't, no, I shouldn't say rarely, but sometimes you can't get pull, you can't pull up to it properly and make it Absolutely. nice and easy for it. Yeah. So it sometimes it's a The struggle. front is, yeah. I think, a better option really. Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing going on in the grill anyway. No. Yeah. It's, you know, it's plastic. Exactly. So. All right, so so Ryan, you oh, well, let me jump to the range part. Oh. Specs are EPA rating with a standard twenty inch wheels is two hundred and thirty six miles, mm-hmm. which is low. It seems low. It is low. It seems low. I mean, a lot of them two fifty is kind yeah. of almost the, the the level. You said you you know your quote was what suffering with it. Well, I yeah, I'd listen. I'm the grim reaper when it comes to range stuff, and I, I, I now I have a reputation about this, right? <laughs> Um, it's just, it's not a lot of mileage. And I got in it, had th- th- like, yeah, I think it was 230 something when I took off and I realized nothing was on. The, the radio wasn't on, the air, nothing was on. And yeah. it was a warm day. I turned the air on and it was like 20 miles gone. Right. Now you're going from 230, like I went right down to like 210 miles and I was like, ooh, you know, and I was leaving for the weekend yeah. and I, this is my own fault. I don't have a charger set up at my house yet, but, um, even still, you know, you start driving and you, you start playing with things, turning things on and off and a few spirited thromps on the throttle mm-hmm. and boost mode. <laughs> yeah. And you're, you know, you're, you're, you just gives you a little anxiety. Well, it gives me anxiety. And, um, I just, I don't know, it's not a lot of mileage, but, um, you know, this car, I, I would assume is, you know, it, it's a GV70. So they put a battery inside of it sort of, it's not, you know, some of the other EVs are, ba- they're building a, ba- a car around a battery. Correct, so right. they can stuff way more battery in the areas that, um, this I, I would, I, I assume they couldn't do as much. So mm-hmm. it's got less range and that's yeah. fine. And it's, it's plenty for some people, I, I'm sure. But. So not having a charger at home, 
yeah, you've not, got that range yeah, that's, anxiety. And that's, listen, that's you know that's my problem. You should, you know, if you're having an EV, you gotta have a, char- a good charger at home. Let's face it. So, it's kind of the case. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, Mike. So. What about you? you? So I had it for the three day Memorial Day weekend yep. and similar thing I got in it, um, you know, turn on the AC, connect my phone and I looked down, I had 219 miles sure. is what it was telling me. And I was like, well, that's not good because, you know, <laughs> three day weekend, I'm thinking I'm definitely gonna have to charge this thing. And I live pretty good distance from here at ATC. So about 45 miles to get home. Um, and then roundabout, I drove around a little bit. It was very nice. And then I don't know what day it was in that weekend, but I had some stuff to do in the morning and I had some stuff to do in the afternoon. And I forgot to plug the car in the night before. Mm -hmm. So I was limited on range of what was available in the car at that moment. So I had to make the decision, do I drive the car in the morning or is it more important (laughs) to save the car for the afternoon? Like which one do I want to have this this newer car for? So I made the choice to drive one of my hoopties in the morning. You know, it doesn't have (laughs) AC and has 300,000 miles on it. So I could let the Genesis plug in at home and charge so then I could use it in the afternoon and evening, which you know, seemed to be the more appropriate use of the car, yeah. you know, just based on what I was doing. Right. Um, so, you know, you didn't have the charger at home. I have the charger at home. And you I just forgot. Yeah. You know, I got home at some point and just went inside, started doing other stuff yeah. and went out and was like, oh, now, now I have way less range. Yeah. So definitely, um, you know, it has a decent charging range for like DC fast charging. Right. Uh, they're saying, mm-hmm. um, I think 18 minutes to go from 10% to 80%. Yeah. If you're on a 350 charger, 350 kilowatt charger. Mm-hmm. Not every charging location has one of those. And a lot of times there's like a Kia Nero plugged into them, not utilizing that charging rate. So you're going to be sitting there longer too, if you're relying on that. When, and you talked, you know, you and I were chatting before this about some of the, uh, the extras you get sure. for when you buy this from, from uh, Genesis, but it's not all it's cracked up to be is what it sounds like. Yeah. I was on the website yesterday, just, you know, again, just familiarizing myself with the vehicle and options and things like that. They claim that you get three years of free charging at Electrify American. I say claim you do. But when you read the fine print, it's limited to 30 minute charging sessions. Mm. So if you can't get that 350 kilowatt charger, you're on the 150, you're probably not going to get as much as you really want to out of that 30 minutes. So yeah. there's a little caveat to it, which of course they don't say in the headline, you have to do a little bit of reading for it. Um, you know, the car has a heat pump, which is going to help, you know, so when you turn on the AC, right. it's um, basically still an AC compressor that's electric, but if you turn the heat on, it's just a little bit different. It's kind of like the AC system is running in reverse. You don't actually have like a heating element the way some cars do. Think about it like a toaster or a hair dryer in the dash, an element that gets hot and then you blow air across it. Right. That's really inefficient. So they have put some technology in the car to help that that out you know so they're definitely conscious of the range um but it'll but be big to see this winter you know again absolutely like the one yeah. benefit you know is seeing just what the degradation is when it gets cold. absolutely yeah. right but go on sorry I, no I well, we, we know that that exists so um you know it'll certainly be interesting to see as our car um stays with us and we keep driving it but um just some of the other things i found on the website this thing's only available in four colors and they're all kind of gray yeah. Very really? muted colors, yeah. There's, all, there's four colors. Four colors. So you yeah. can't get... Although that's not um, so bad because then it's easier to choose, right? You <laughs> can't get the green that are our gas GV70. Yeah, that's that's a, nice a really color. nice color. Mm-hmm. These are basically just grays that you can get. That's hmm. common. The, the A lot of the, the Ionic 6, for example, Hyundai, the, uh, you know, the, the other, a couple of the other Genesis, the GVC, they are limited, very muted palette, which, yes. okay, maybe, you know, angles or whatever, maybe it's just simpler, uh, you know, keeping things you know easy but yeah it's it's an odd thing if you want something that stands out they don't offer maybe that. they're lighter weight you know it, it could be <laughs> right yeah right lightweight paint <laughs> and um it's only available in 23 states so if you don't live in oh. one of those 23 states and you really want one you're gonna have to do some traveling to get one and um, will the dealer also be able to maintain it near you correct That's, yeah you, you might not have, have to sign up for that techs that are kind of certified in those kinds of things there's only two interior color choices available and there's really no options on the vehicle. Like, right. you know, we were joking about the $45 first aid kit, but that is legitimately an option. Yeah. <laughs> it's that, it's wheel locks, and you can choose um, the Advance and the Prestige is right. basically it. So it, they kind of almost make it easy. You don't really have a lot of choice yeah, if you want one of these things. Right. Thing, I and I mean, and the, the Advance is very nice. It is. I mean, I, 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 you know, there's times that we, have, you know, we buy the mainstream vehicle, mm-hmm. you know, the mainstream yeah. trim. You know, and there's times you go like, oh, well, you know, it'd be really nice to have that one. We, we borrowed that one. And that was really nice. I mean, I could get away with not having a heated steering wheel, though in an EV. That's $67,000? It, it, it's having it, 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 but versus the price. Right. Though it is, again, you come back to the whole, like, okay, heated front and rear seats, heated steering wheel. Okay, now you don't have to use the it's heat as much thing. in the winter, mm. so it's an efficiency yeah. thing. So right. yeah, um, but not for that seven plus grand difference. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of diff- a lot of money. It, you know, I get it. I get it with pricing. I get it with the with with inflation and all that. But at the same time, you're talking a sixty thousand dollar vehicle where people are using BMW X5s just 
for driving the kids around, you know, they're, yeah. they're, you know, so it's, it's, it's pricey, but on paper it's expensive, but is it really a ridiculous price? Is it really a super high price? I mean, it's, it's lower, it's cutting, it's undercutting a lot of the other EVs yeah. at 60 grand still. Well, that, yeah, I mean, it is, it is. We, we, we lose track. I mean, it's, it's sad when you just to say that, but yeah, it's really, it is actually not that bad when you compare it to others. Like an uh, EQ, Mercedes yeah, Benz EQ. Yeah, I mean, what was that? That thing was ninety two thousand dollars. Yeah, so <laughs> there you right. go. I mean, and that's a big price cut. You know? it, it's a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, a little more range, but the rest of it doesn't feel like a significantly different package. Definitely thirty grand. Sure. No, they're very package. similar um, mm. in terms of just I think fit and finish and feel and driving experience. Yeah. Um, I think the Genesis might be a little quicker than the EQE mm. SUV three fifty formatic, whatever they call that thing. Right. Right. Um, I should know. I did another video on it where I said it like a hundred times, but. Um, <laughs> You know, it's, it's a lot of money, but I, I think the value is there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's sort of where, I mean, Lexus did it really well. You could buy an LS that had all the S-Class stuff or all the 7 Series stuff, but it was less money. And that's kind of what Genesis, like yeah. you said earlier, is doing now. Um, they're definitely going after those luxury German brands just at a maybe more reasonable price point. It's really not an inexpensive price point, mm. but you know, without that premium sort of tacked on top. Yeah, and I would agree they do some things better. It does some things better. Mm -hmm. um, For sure. You know, the, the just the regen... Um, just simple stuff like that. I think they right. do it a little better. So that's a good thing. Yep. Um, buy it or something else. That's not for me. It's nice, but it's, um, I would, at that, at that kind of money, I would, uh, I mean, maybe I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go that upscale, but I would, I, I need more range. Yeah. If I'm going EV for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like the vehicle. Um, if I and if I wanted this vehicle, honestly, I'd probably buy the GV70 with a gas motor. Mm -hmm. If I really wanted I like, that yeah. vehicle, it's yeah. a lot less money. You don't have the range issues and things like that. Mm -hmm. I would certainly buy this over the EQE SUV. Yeah, I would okay. definitely save that money, and I think it's probably just a better overall I do driving experience and, and deal with the experience. But again, I need the range. I drive quite a bit, mm -hmm. and I would be hard pressed dealing with even if it gets up to that 230 or 236, whatever they say it is. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of tough. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, it's it's a I think it's an it's an option in leasing because you get the tax credit if you lease it because it's the the Inflation Reduction Act looks and all the modifications since it first came out address that differently. So at that point, the the price comes down. You know, if you get a dealer that's that's if you negotiate well with the dealer, let's leave it that way. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's a potential because you really are getting you know you're get you're getting that benefit of the tax credit, but buying it, you're not going to get that benefit. So uh, out the door now. Range wise, I agree. Um, I've, I've looked at my life and I, I haven't really gone that far, which sounds kind of sad. <laughs> like, could it get me to Boston? Could it get me down down towards the train station down in Southern Connecticut? Like, yeah, eh, maybe I could live with it. Winter, though, I, I want to see see what happens with winter. So yeah, I'd be curious about myself. Yeah. yeah. So we have uh, we had the first drive, I, I believe, online at consumerreports.org, and right now we're finishing up the miles on it. So um, check back to see how how the electrified GV70 performs in our tests. Um, mm -hmm. So right now, just want to uh, take a moment to remind people to uh, to send us your questions, send us your texts, send us your short video questions to talkingcars at iCloud.com. Uh, really, really do need them, really like them. Uh, we get a lot of submissions, but always looking for more. So any questions you have, stuff about EVs, stuff about range, stuff about buying, financing, whatever it is, talkingcars at iCloud.com. Uh, so now we're going to move over to our question and answer part of the show. We have a question from Steve on tire flat spots. A while back, I purchased a new set of Goodyear Assurance weather ready tires. And the dealership has been inspecting them every six months or so. I put 25,000 miles on them so far and was told they have 70% of the original tires and are still good to drive on. However, I don't drive every day and I've noticed flat spots forming after a few days of sitting in the garage. As a result, the car shakes like crazy on the highway for the first few miles until the tires warm up. I've never had tires do this before, and the issue hasn't gone away. Do you think these tires might be defective and should be replaced, or is this just a result of the softer compounds used in all-weather tires? So, Ryan, <laughs> we're going to go to you with the tire <clears throat> question. Is this common? Um, yeah, so, it's not. Um, back in the day, we used to have bias-ply tires, right? Can, these you, are, can you explain? Yeah, just, yeah, what it's just the way they're, they're constructed. So, um, early tires were just a bias ply. So they were, it was just the way the, the plies were laid. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the tires were much more robust, but they were just prone to flat spotting uh, if they sat, especially when, you know, you, you drive down the road to get warm, you park for a day or, you know, park for the night in the morning, they'll have a little bit of flat spot, but you shake it out and it goes away. But this is back in the day. Yeah. Modern tires are radials and it's a radial construction, meaning, you know, the, the way the belts are laid on these is different than the, um, the bias ply. We don't have to go into the details, but it's a, 
smoother riding tire, no mm-hmm. matter what. Um, and r- radials rarely flat spot. So we'll occasionally hear when we, we'll do track handling or do something when we're out on the track and we get the tires real hot and then pull it in and park it and put it on the cold concrete floor in the shop. And then the next day someone gets in it and takes off and thump, 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 thump. But after about five minutes, not even, um, it goes away because the tires have warmed up and got their shape back. Um, but that's an extreme case. We're like getting these tires hot. Right. Right. right? Um, regular driving, um, you know, pull it in your garage, park it. Um, it's, it's not that common to have them fl- actually flat spot. Um, there's also flat spotting where you, if you were to lock up a tire by accident and you actually skid in one spot for a short period of time, it actually takes away material. And now you have, you have a physical flat spot. Like you're actually missing rubber there. Right. That almost never goes away. Um, it will slowly, but you, sometimes it actually gets worse because it accentuates the way it rolls on the road. That's like usually it, like the Haas formula one. Team. Yeah. They're but again, that's spotting. not common either. Yeah. And that's not common anymore either because, um, we have the analog braking system. So it never locks hard in one spot anymore. Um, too long. So that's not really common. Um, is it, con- is it, uh, is, it, is there a chance there's something wrong with the tires? Um, defects from manufacturer are extremely rare. I mean, in my 18 years here, I, we've never seen a tire come in and we buy a lot of tires. We've never seen a tire come in that had like an actual manufacturer defect. What that means, you know, if the bead was screwed up or the, you know, one of the, um, one of the layers of the, um, one of the plies was laid wrong and it was an overlap sometimes. Um, it's not that common. Um, however, it can happen. And if that's the case, I would bring these back. Um, there is, there is warranty on that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you have a treadwear warranty, which is a pain in the butt and you know, it's how you get to prove all these things to get uh, like a percent, a small percentage of your money back, yeah, like a, pro rate, but a manufacturer right? defect. They can prove there's something wrong from the factory. They'll replace your tires usually for free. Um, I mean, he's been driving on them for a while, but 70, 70% tread. I mean, these tires still have some quite a bit of life left. So, um, it might be worth bringing them back. So, um, my advice to him would be like, bring this car back to your dealer or wherever you have this thing serviced. Um, you might have to leave it there so they can drive it in the next morning when it's cool. Um, cause you know, if they drive it there, they're going to warm sure. up and probably, you know, he'll take off to go there. The shake on the way there goes, it'll go away. And then you got to show these guys, um, what it's doing and they won't believe him because it's not shaking anymore. So, um, but the, you know, most mechanics understand what that, this phenomenon is and, um, they can take a look at it cause there could be something else wrong with the car too, maybe. Um, but the fact that he says it goes away after a little few miles on the highway suggests it is some sort of a flat spotting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, these are Goodyear assurance, weather ready tires are great tires, um, from a performance standpoint, we've tested them. Um, they're not some known name tires, you know, from nowhere. Yeah. Um, good years. I mean, they make good tires, right? right. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, as the answer is question, really, it's not, um, not common. Um, it is possible. And, um, I wouldn't say they're unsafe, uh, probably, but definitely worth getting checked out. I mean, that's annoying. You, you know, those are, they're not cheap tires either. So no matter what size you buy them. And so I would, I would definitely, um, investigate it. All right. Well, Steve, so maybe spend a little extra money, but instead of buying a whole new set of tires, I mean, you, no, know, you, can, spend four, yeah. you can spend four figures in that or absolutely, you know, a couple hundred dollars, maybe on having a, th- a thorough diagnostic, mm-hmm. but let us know what happens. Cause it is, would be interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so that's it for this episode. Again, send your questions to us talking cards at iCloud.com, uh, short video questions, text questions. Um, as always, this episode's produced by Dave Abrams and video was shot by Andrew Belize and Anatoly Shumsky. I'm John Linkov. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you all next time.